Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is day eight of 40 days um, on our journey through the book of Psalms. So glad to have you listening in again today. I just wanted to come before you and just encourage you on this beautiful evening. I want to start with when we're worshiping the Father, we must, must worship him in spirit and in truth. So as I sit and just reflect on his word and revelation is revealed, I just wanted to maybe break down. We know about the laws, right? You know, we know the Pharisees, uh, <laughs> You know, they follow the law to the detriment of themselves, right? This legalistic um, way, um, very carnal way. But we know with the word, there's carnal interpretation, right? To make it more tangible, palatable for some, right? Um, in our fallen state, a way for us to understand it more, Um but then there's the spiritual revelation and only the Holy Spirit can provide that. And so I just wanted to take two laws, for example. So we know, we all know like the major sins, right? Do not steal, do not commit, you know, thou shall not murder, thou shall not commit adultery. So I just wanted to share um those two scriptures. So thou shalt not murder, you know, I was gonna say, okay, that's easy. I've never done that before, right? Like, no, okay, easy, check, you know, and we also know, you know what I mean? Like, we always try to like, kind of, I haven't done that sin, so check, I'm good type deal. So carnally, thou shalt not murder. We, you know, we, we understand that one for the most part in the carnal aspect, but what about spiritually? Luke 8, 11 says that the word is a seed, right? The word is a seed. Also, Hebrews 4 and 12 says that the word is sharper than a two-edged sword, right? Spiritually, thou shalt not murder. If you feed someone the wrong seed or false teachings that are practiced a lot or um you know these false doctrines that are shared a lot that's committing murder it says thou shalt not murder and we know the the blood and gore of things but spiritually if you're feeding someone false teachings it's not the teachings of the lord um yeah you are committing murder Take, for instance, the, the commandment, thou shall not uh, commit adultery, right? So, again, the carnal aspect, okay, we know, you know, I'm not married type deal, or no, I've never done it in an aspect, but spiritually, do we know what that means, right? Think of what Mary said, heard this example, I mean, used like, oh, it just really hit when they shared this. It says, think of Mary when the angel came to her and said um, that you, you know, will have Jesus, the man, the son of God who will come and save the world. She was like, how could this happen? For I have never knew a man that knew in that sense meaning i've never had intercourse right with anyone so how could this be she had questions right think about the scripture um where it says you know gonna be many who come and say for i prophesied in your name i cast out demons in your name and god is gonna say depart from me for i never knew you that same new is really that new is um what mary was saying depart from me before 
depart from me for I never knew you or I never impregnated you with my word, with my real, my true word. You never spiritually like really received me just in this carnal aspect. So when it says thou shall not commit adultery, we know the carnal aspect, right? But what about spiritually? Have you been reading or under doctrines being impregnated with false doctrines and teachings that are not of Christ, that are not of God? Like it's not the true and living word. That's cheating on Jesus. That is committing adultery. The law is spiritual, right? The word is a seed. There's false and those true seeds. We're either feeding or killing spiritually with the word. As we go along this journey, that's why we're going scripture by scripture, right? Word by word, just being in his word, reading his word. And may he provide revelation to us throughout this journey to show us. Second Corinthians 3, 6 says the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Let's continue to press in to him. Let's get started. Today is day eight. We will be reading Psalms 29 through 32. This first Psalm of David is the powerful voice of God. This is the word of the Lord. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf. Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. Hmm. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all cry, glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Psalms 30. Praise for dramatic deliverance. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, 
I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silent? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turn my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy. That my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Psalms 31 teaches us to be of good courage. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to rescue me. By my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love. For you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You've not given me into the hands of the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by it anguish and my years by groaning my strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak because of all my enemies i am the utter contempt of my neighbors and an object of dread to my closest friends those who see me on the street flee from me I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear many whispering, terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. Many times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Let me not be put to shame, Lord, for I have cried out to you. But let the wicked be put to shame and be silent in the realm of the dead. Let their lying lips be silenced. For with pride and contempt, they speak arrogantly against the righteous. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from all human entries. You keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love when I was in a city under siege. In my alarm, I said, I'm cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord perseveres those Excuse me, the Lord preserves those who are true to him. But the proud, he pays back in full. 
be strong and take heart. All you who hope in the Lord. Psalms 32 is the blessedness of forgiveness. Bless, blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them and whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and brittle or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous, seeing all you who are upright in heart. Oh, how beautiful, how beautiful. As Psalms 29 speaks of God in the midst of a storm and his power and might over the storm. Guys, the Lord is unshakable. He sits enthroned as king forever. We have to continue to feed our soul. Our God is the God of the storms. We got to see God for who he is. See him as he really is. Huge, mighty, strong able to deliver powerful king, capital K, okay? Nothing happens in our life outside of his control. I'm talking about even during the storms of life, our response should be to worship him. He is truly worthy all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. Keeping God first, that's my only relationship goal. And I pray <laughs> that is our primary goal as we're walking out and living in purpose. Continue to offer incense up to the Lord of your prayers and your worship and your praise. We are his playlist. Until tomorrow. Stay blessed.